I'm Dr. Carlos Coton. I'm a certified catechist for the Archdiocese of Miami. And it is a pleasure to be with you again to finalize the coverage of the seven sacraments of our Holy Church. We had spoken about the sacraments of initiation. Then we spoke about the sacraments of healing. And the addition of those is five. If we are dealing with seven sacraments, then we have two to cover today. And those two are the sacraments of work or of mission. And they are the sacraments of matrimony and the sacraments of holy order. And we're going to find out that they are not as uh, opposed to one another as we normally tend to think of them. But before we begin that process, we put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you once again for bringing us together to learn more about you and your faith and your church, to learn more, more about the sacraments that you have instituted for our graces, and so that we can ask you, through that grace, to be more and more like you with each and every passing day. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. And we start always with a prayer that you taught us yourself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we get into the heart of our material, that prayer that the Lord taught us is fundamental also indirectly in the sacraments. It is said in every one of the sacraments, one way or another. But that first word that our... Remember that, that prayer comes from the, the apostles asking the Lord to teach them to pray. And the Lord said, this is how you do it. And the first word that he says is so important because he didn't say, my father. He said, our father. And by saying that, he made us all brothers and sisters because we have one Father, which is the, the, the Lord Almighty. So what a wonderful way to start that prayer by saying, Our Father. And no matter what language you translate it to, it's always the plural. It is always the plural. And it is found in uh, three of the Gospels that we spoke about, two directly, one indirectly. So, so let's go then into the heart of the matter of this session, which are the last two sacraments. And, and not necessarily because they're the last two in a person's chronological life, because if we were to follow that, we would have to move them before the anointing of the sick, because the anointing of the sick includes the viaticum or extreme unction or the passage rite. <clears throat> so that one would have to be chronologically the last one in a person's life. We move these sacraments of work or of mission into more into the middle. Uh, in a person's chronological life, that may be right after confirmation. One of the sacraments of, um, of mission or of work is the sacrament of matrimony. And the majority of the people are involved in this one in a, sacrament, in a sacramental life. And many of the RCIA candidates are looking for this sacrament and because these are required, the sacraments of initiation, they take the program of RCIA to satisfy the sacraments of reconciliation to have this sacrament of matrimony. And it is a gorgeous sacrament. And we spoke about the ministers of all of the other sacraments. Sacrament of baptism could be a deacon or a priest, right? Next sacrament, Eucharist, priests. Priests are bishops, um, uh, I'm sorry, priests, bishops, archbishops, even the Pope, they're all priests. They can consecrate the Holy Eucharist. A deacon and a minister can administer it, but the consecration, the transfiguration of bread and wine into body and blood is only done by a person who has taken the Holy Orders, the next and final sacrament we will talk about. Back to matrimony, no, back to um, Eucharist. Next sacrament, confirmation, we said bishop or archbishop is the minister there. Can delegate a priest if need be. Next, the sacrament of reconciliation, only priests. Priests, bishops, archbishops, pope. Next sacrament, anointing of the sick. Priest, bishop, archbishop, pope. 
Sacrament of matrimony. Who is or are the ministers there? The ministers is the bride and the groom. Those are the ministers. They are the bride and the groom. The priest, the deacon, the bishop, the archbishop, whoever else is there, are only really witnesses in the name of the church that this is happening as a sacrament. But the ministers who are marrying one another are the bride and the groom. We talked about how many times all of the other sacraments can be had in a lifetime. We spoke about that. We spoke about some of them are once in a lifetime. Baptism, confirmation. What else? Only once in a lifetime. Matrimony. Once in a lifetime. Indelible imprint in the soul cannot be removed. There are exceptions. What would be the exception to a matrimony not lasting a lifetime? That The main exception would be if... A, one of the members, a spouse, passes away. If a spouse passes away, the remaining spouse, if he or she had nothing to do with that passing though, can remarry in the church. Can remarry in the church. That's one exception. The other exception, which is not, which is rarer, or more rare, is an annulment. An annulment is not a Catholic divorce. It is a, an examination of possible ten canonical laws, one of ten canonical laws that were violated or were not maintained in the original sacrament of matrimony. Therefore, that matrimony, even though it was inside a church, may not have been sacramental. And the tribunal of the archdiocese may be able to annul that matrimony and now that matrimony really never existed as a sacrament the bride the ex-spouses can now remarry i happen to be an advocate for the tribunal of the archdiocese of miami and it is a very very painful process to everyone involved so those are the two situations where a person can remarry in church what else can a person do with that sacrament if the spouse passes? If the spouse passes, the husband can indeed follow, instead of remarrying, can, he can enter the holy orders and become a priest. Um, that can happen. And I believe the archdiocese has a, an age limit. If that happens before the turn of 57 years of age, that person can enter the seminary. After that, no, because Holy Orders takes a, a, a prescribed time and a person may not live long enough to fulfill that, uh, that requirement of learning through the, through the seminary and then becoming a practical uh, priest. There may not be enough years in a lifetime to do that. So, matrimony, once in a lifetime with two exceptions. Um, till death do us part really means till death do us part. It doesn't mean until I don't love you anymore. It doesn't mean until I don't want to have any more children with you. It doesn't mean because we haven't won the lottery even though we spend $10 each a week with the raspaditos, it means that um, till death do us part. And death parts us and you may be able to remarry. So that is the first sacrament of work or service or mission. The other one we spoke about indirectly, which is holy orders. Holy orders are becoming a priest. And we spoke about a, de a deacon being transitional or permanent because he's moving up to become a priest. In the priest domain, we have spoken about that in view of all of the sacraments. A priest is involved directly or indirectly in all of the other sacraments, including holy orders, where he will be ordained to do all of those sacraments. Holy orders will take a, uh, a, some time uh, in the seminary, in the minor seminary here in Miami, and then move to Delray in the major seminary where um, studies continue. Interesting because I mentioned that, um, that a person can, a spouse can die and become a, a, a priest. 
We had a case in the archdiocese a month ago where, and this was incredible, a priest who was an Episcopalian priest before and converted, he was married as an Episcopalian priest that had a son. So here's a priest who has a son, a grown-up son. So he's a father-father. Imagine that. Imagine coming to Mass and the priest saying, I want, you to, uh, I want to introduce you to my son. A little shocking at first, and then he has to explain the whole thing that he was an Episcopalian priest before, and they can marry, and they can have children. And at any rate, um, the entire Catholic Church was okay with that conversion. Uh, he went through the seminarian process and became a Catholic priest. Passed away shortly. It was sad to hear. And I knew about that, but I did not know that he was part of our archdiocese until uh, he passed away. I knew of that priest existing, but I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. At any rate, going back to holy orders. Holy orders, how many times in a lifetime? Once. Indelible imprint on the soul cannot be removed. Cannot be removed. Once a priest, always a priest. The priest becomes a criminal. He may be in jail. He's still a priest. He cannot operate as a priest. There's nothing he can do that's priestly, but the sacrament is with him forever. Forever. So, those are, uh, well, going back to the, the finalization of that uh, um, last sacrament, who is the minister, the officiating minister in the sacrament of holy orders? Only a bishop or an archbishop or the pope. A priest cannot ordain another priest unless really rare and strange circumstances where there's no one else and then another priest may do so. But I don't think I've ever heard of that happening. So it is the domain of the bishop, the archbishop, and, and, uh, and the pope. It is a very, very long mass, typically done at the cathedral, typically done by a graduating group of priests. Uh, and that graduating group can be two. Uh, two months ago, the Archdiocese of Miami ordained two priests. That was the extent of it. Regretfully, there is a dire need for priests. More die than are ordained. So the balance is very off key. More die than are ordained and we have a lack of priests. Before, we used to have three priests almost in every parish. We have some parishes now with only one. The majority of the parishes have two. And uh, some parishes don't even have a pastor. They have a, an administrator because of the dearth and lack of priests. This is not a public service announcement for you to consider that. It's just a, a dire fact that that is what it is. Uh, I went to school next door here at LaSalle, and that school, when I went to it, was uh, run by, and every teacher was a brother of the Christian schools, the LaSalle brothers. Even the order is almost gone. The Maris brothers run Christopher Columbus. I think there's only six there where the entire faculty was Marist. Curly, the high school itself, no longer even exists, and that was run by the brothers of the Holy Cross. So the brothers have disappeared. The brothers were religious um, men who used to only teach. They were not priests. They could not consecrate. They could not give mass. They could not listen to the sacraments. They were simply um, uh, teachers in a religious sense. Very much the counterpart of sisters and nuns, which have almost also disappeared. Um, there are only three or four um, groups that are still using the, their, their, their attire and therefore you can tell them by the attire they're wearing. And that doesn't mean that they have totally disappeared because a lot of nuns now do not have to wear the entire attire that they used to and uh, they may be sitting right next to you and they do not appear to be nuns. So they haven't totally disappeared from the face of the earth but they indeed the numbers have dwindled. The mother houses where they are um, housed at, pardon the redundancy, have seen a, an extreme decline in their numbers. But going back to the priests and the, and, and the holy orders, because that is the closure of the seven sacraments that we have been discussing. We have spoken about the seven sacraments. We have spoken about 
how often you can have them. We have spoken about the ministers of each of them. We have spoken about them in three different categories. And, uh, and it is important for you to maintain the fact that they are biblically based, that they are based from gospel passages or Acts of the Apostles or letters of the Apostles. They were foretold by prophets in the Old Testament. They are instituted by the Lord to give us grace in a particular moment in our lives. They each have indelible imprints on our soul. Some are forever, some are irrevocable, <clears throat> and some are once in the lifetime, some are difficult, um, multiple times in our lifetime. All of this is to put a closure on the fact that they are there for us. They are granted to us by the Lord to make our lives say, uh, saner, to make our lives saintlier, to be each and every day, as our opening and closing prayer says, more and more like the Lord, because that is our intention. The closer we are to imitate Him in our lives, the more saintly we are, the better we are, and the more we do what He told us to do, which is love each other as we love ourselves and Him. So with that, we bring a closing to our coverage of the seven sacraments. I hope we have fulfilled your quench for knowledge for these seven incredible moments in our lives. Um, I will forward to the office some questions for you to conceptualize. I'm going to forward the material for reference, which is the where to find in the Bible the multiple messages and <clears throat> excuse me and mentions of the sacraments and a short list where we really can hang our our hat on that those are the biblical passages where the church stipulates that those sacraments were instituted. With that said, uh, thank you very much for allowing me to participate with you in your program. I wish you the best of luck in your continuation with the program. We have a short way to go if I read the, um, the material correctly. And uh, best of luck. May the Lord always be in your lives and bless you and your families always. We close as we opened by putting ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We open with the Lord's Prayer. Now we close with a prayer to our Holy Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And a prayer to the Holy Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessings now and always. Amen.